With Bruce Page and Gillian Whiting, this is National Nine News. Nine dead, dozens injured in Sydney's commuter train disaster. A record dry January for Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Heather Beatty decides to cop it sweet. Good evening. Good evening. A difficult rescue has been going on for most of the day south of Sydney after this morning's rail tragedy. Nine people were killed, including the driver, when the commuter train jumped the tracks. Forty-one more are in hospital. Getting to the scene of the disaster, four kilometres south of Waterfall, was complicated by the rough terrain. The train crashed at a quarter past six Queensland time. For the early morning commuters, there was no warning. The 624 out of Central Station, bound for Port Kembla, ploughed off the rails with a sickening force in country that's remote and rugged. The Tangara was travelling at speed, bringing down power lines. The front carriage took the full impact of the crash. Its momentum saw it launched into the air, bouncing off a cliff face before stopping 100 metres further down the track. The driver was among the first to be confirmed dead. Only those who could walk managed to scramble from the wreckage. One was even able to telephone her parents. She cool. just said it was horrible, that's why she's hysterical. And she didn't recall the incident at all? Oh, she just said there was people injured and dead everywhere. After first treating the walking wounded, rescuers then set about trying to help the many who were still trapped inside. With doors locked shut, police were forced to clamber on to the upturned carriages and smash their way in. Residents from nearby Waterfall joined in the operation and spoke to survivors. The, the people said uh, that they, they thought the train was travelling too fast around the bend. But for emergency crews, this was not the time to apportion blame as they faced the demanding and difficult task of gaining access to the wreckage. The train itself is, is uh, quite destroyed. It's uh, almost like a car impact and you've seen high, high speed impacts with cars. The train has been ripped at, at various parts. Um, it's quite, as I say, chaotic. One by one, the injured emerged from their broken and twisted carriages. It was painfully slow as only four wheel drive ambulances could make it in or out. And then there were the dead. First reports of numerous fatalities proved correct. I saw the book. One of them had been reading papers they've, they've, they've been reading, their, li their, their lives snatched from them. In the end, the search and rescue mission took several hours. Once satisfied no one else was trapped, investigators moved in. As to what may have caused a derailment, uh, clearly speed, things being left on the track or any other combination, uh, track buckling or a whole range of causes may have actually you know, resulted in this tragedy. Damien Ryan, National 9 News. Rescue workers say when they reached the disaster, so many of the passengers were injured and in shock, they were bordering on hysteria. All the gear needed to get the injured out of the wreckage had to be carried to the crash site on foot. The rescuers managed to bring survivor after survivor up to waiting helicopters was a tribute to their planning and their determination. The odds were stacked against them. The wreck lay at the end of a steep, narrow track nearly two kilometres long. Heavy lifting and cutting equipment had to be carried in piece by piece. Now bear in mind the firefighters and other emergency workers, once they get to the site, they're literally exhausted from carrying that gear. Once there, workers did what they could in cramped, often dangerous conditions. Um, beside each of the tracks with the cutting, it's not much room to move. Staunchions have been ripped down and there is considerable electrical wire, uh, albeit at the moment not active, that's laying on the track and making sort of rescue quite difficult. Uh, it is a difficult site because of the uh, close environment. Only one or two rescuers can get in there at a time. Inside the carriages, many of the injured were pinned between seats and twisted metal. It's a slow process to move through, bearing in mind that as we move each piece of metal, it can put stresses on other parts of the carriage. The tangle of the wreck meant rescuers couldn't even be sure they hadn't left anyone behind. Specialist teams called in to search every carriage. They're currently in there utilising a fair amount of equipment, including listening devices and heat sensing equipment to check through to make sure that we have located all the people. For exhausted rescuers, the final hurdle was getting survivors out as quickly and carefully as possible. Not an easy task in the steep and rocky terrain.
While medical teams treated the injured on site, rescuers desperately searched for a safe way to transport them to safety, where rows of empty ambulances stood waiting. The army was called in in the hope their tanks could more easily drive the injured out. In the end, Bush Fire Brigade four-wheel drives brought them out one by one. Perhaps the most remarkable rescuers, the walking wounded from the train, who heroically joined the effort to save fellow passengers. People off the train themselves, they were helping. Layla McKinnon, National 9 News. The first of the casualties, the most seriously injured, were flown into Sydney to the waiting arms of trauma surgeons. They were bruised, battered and bloody, but in the best of hands. The choppers, the saviors again today, turned around and continued their desperate missions. I've been involved in a few disasters, but I haven't been in one this big before. Outside the emergency units, there were truly awful scenes. A procession of ambulances made a painstaking journey by road, transporting the young and the elderly to safety. In all, 41 people were taken to six Sydney hospitals in varying conditions. For relatives, it was a confusing, anxious morning. Just finding where their loved ones had been taken was hard enough, then trying to find out their condition. There are a lot of injuries, mate. Yeah. Mainly to her head or to on her chest? On her chest, on her hips, on her hands, on her... Carl Stefanovic, National 9 News. A judge has already been appointed to head an inquiry into how the disaster happened. It'll begin by analysing the train's black box data recorder which has been found. For now, recovery operations continue at the crash site and joining us now is Nine's Helen Kapalos. Helen, what stage is the operation at now? Well, Gillian, police are continuing a DVI, which is a disaster victim identification process, in an effort to formally identify the victims. Now, we can tell you, we've just had news to hand that seven bodies have been removed from the scene, and police have confirmed that there are four females and two males among the dead. Now, tonight there will be a delicate operation because there are still some fears, however slight, that there could be more bodies discovered. I should stress, however, that that is an unlikely scenario at this stage. OK, the wreckage is still on the track, clearly. When do you think that will be cleared? But we're hearing from City Rail that it will take up to 48 hours for the track to be cleared. And police are also telling us that it will be some days before the bodies are positively identified, Gillian. Okay, that's Helen Kapalos, thank you.